Hey, you. Yeah, you. Is your hair ugly? Does it need serious help? Then you're gonna have to shave it off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Follow these four easy steps to make your hair perfect. Get to it, girl! Welcome back to my channel! Today I'm rocking the curly hair. The curly hair is down, it is out, it is doing its thing, it is living its best life. Can we just take a moment to appreciate all of this? Can we just take a moment to appreciate where I was like last year? We've come a long way. So I did a video all about my skincare and my hair care journey. How I went from looking really, really bad to looking pretty dang good. Like the glow up, the glow up happened. Based on that video, I got a lot of people asking for my curly hair routine and I don't know why it took me so long to do it. I think just like the stars didn't align. But today is the day guys, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I go from this to this. You know, my hair's not as long as my freaking sister's. Wait, come over here. Look at my sister's hair. <laughs> that is like natural, what? That's the goal, 20, 2020, that's the goal. How long did that take you? Honestly, not that long. Like my hair grows like an inch a month. If, wow, I, don't must be if nice. I don't straighten it. Must be nice. So does yours, you're lying. Yours is just all curled up. This is the length of my hair, Maya. Maybe I just have more hair. Okay, not all of us can be like my sister, so I have to resort to these things, okay? Fashion week is next week. I'm super excited, so I'm having my mom put these in because I want my hair to be luscious and curly so I don't have to straighten my hair during fashion week. Speaking of fashion week, I have been prepping a lot for fashion week, and the other day, I drove past a store called The Real Real, and I was like, that store looks really cool. Someday I'm gonna go inside there. And then like literally not even two days later, it was fate, they contacted me to sponsor a video. Pretty exciting guys, how that worked out. If you guys don't know what The Real Real is, it's a really amazing online app, store, and website. They sell Chanel, Balenciaga, Louis Vuitton, Vintage, New, all these insane designers for up to 90% off. They have expert authenticate everything on the site. So you know that everything that you're buying on the site is real. If you want to consign with them, you can either ship it into their office or have someone come to your house and literally authenticate things with you. Honestly, it's really great. I'm gonna use them to not only sell a lot of my stuff, but also just buy cool vintage stuff. I found this iconic, amazing backpack from The Real Real the other day with Riley. Long story short, it's great. You should definitely check them out. I'm sure you'll find something that you like on their site because I found tons. If you use the description box link below, you can get $25 off. So thank you to The Real Real for sponsoring this video. I literally love you guys. You guys are iconic, amazing. Beautiful. Give this video a big thumbs up for curly hair routines and natural hair. And yeah, let's get into this video and get into my curly hair routine. If you guys want curls like these, keep watching. First thing that I do when I get into the shower is I have to turn music on because I'm gonna be there in a while. My hands are gonna get tired. So I have to put on my playlist. If you guys want to listen to any of my Spotify playlists, I will have those down below because I love when you guys go and listen to my music. I feel like we bond the most during that time. So now that I'm in the shower, the first thing that I will do is I will fully wet my hair. Like fully, fully, fully wet my hair. You never wanna go into putting product or detangling or anything if your hair is still dry. And if you have curly hair that has a lot of layers to it, sometimes when you run your hair under the shower, it takes like a solid minute to saturate all of the strands with water. After I do that, I'll typically go in with just a little bit of conditioner because I don't like putting shampoo into my hair if there's a little bit of tangles in it. I don't know, I just feel like that sets you up for failure. It's gonna create a mop, it's gonna look really bad. Don't do that. What I like to do is add a little bit of conditioner, just run it through really quickly to make sure any spots in my hair that are definitely tangled can loosen up. The conditioner that I use is the Diva Curl conditioner. I think it's just like the original conditioner. I know there's a couple different ones, but honestly, I don't really have like preference towards one. So then after that, I will go in with with my shampoo. Normal shampoo can be really drying, but the Diva Curl one kind of gives a little bit more softness to your hair. I thoroughly shampoo my hair. I separate it into different sections and then I work that way just to make sure I'm really getting the scalp nice and clean. And I'll probably shampoo my hair once a week. Like literally that is it. It dries out my hair. It breaks up my curls. So I only shampoo my hair when I need to. After I shampoo my hair, that's when I go into my conditioner. 
One thing that I like to do with my conditioner is I actually put my conditioner all the way pretty much from like my scalp to the ends. I don't like take my conditioner and like rub it on my scalp, but I'll definitely go up to like the top parts of my hair. I know growing up, I always used to read that you're only supposed to apply conditioner to your ends, but when you have curly hair, at least for me, that is not the case. I don't know, when you have curly hair, it's not just about the ends. If I only put conditioner on my ends, the whole rest of my hair would look wild and crazy. And then I would just have these little baby curls at the end. One thing important to note, when I'm in the shower, I use a wide tooth comb. It's little, it's perfect, it's not too obnoxious. I bring them with me whenever I travel. They're perfect for detangling in the shower. After I shampoo and conditioner my hair inside the shower, I basically get out of the shower and the one thing that you need to know, at least that I do with my hair care routine, it has changed my life. I use a microfiber towel. I always dry my hair with a microfiber towel because it prevents frizz pretty much the most out of any towels. I've heard of people also using big oversized t-shirts to dry their hair. I do that sometimes, like when I don't have any clean towels, low key. But yeah, pretty much whenever I get out of the shower, I use a microfiber towel on my hair. These are the microfiber towels that I use. They're really good. I got a pack of like three or four of them on Amazon for like really cheap. I like them, they're really big. They're like super nice and good for your hair. So I'm gonna put the microfiber towels that I buy in the description box below. Number two, the deep condition. What I really like to do once a week is Olaplex my hair. I got my Olaplex from my curly hair stylist. This is what you need. Olaplex bond multiplier and bond perfector, number one and number two. My stylist said that if you take a little bit of this, a little bit of this conditioner, mix it together, add some water, and then microwave it so it heats up, gets nice and warm, perfect to open up the hair cuticle. And then if you put it in something like this, this is just a little bottle that I got from Sally's Beauty Supply. Shake it up. Ah! Did what? it just spray out? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was so scary. Apply it all over your hair. It's gonna do great things. It's gonna do wonders for your hair. My hair is blonde, it's bleached, so it's drier than normal because it's gone through color processing. So Olaplex just basically helps to get my hair back to its natural state and be nice and healthy and moisturized and have my curls be bouncy like they were never colored. If I did not have Olaplex, my hair would look really different. After I put my Olaplex in, my stylist said to leave it in overnight, but I've looked up other reviews on Olaplex and they basically said that like leaving it overnight versus 45 minutes doesn't really make a difference. You leave it in for however you want. I don't care, do your thing. So yeah, I'll basically leave it in, go do some things, go work, go play video games until I'm ready to wash it out. Also important to note when you're Olaplexing your hair, when you're wearing your hair, when you're sleeping at night, doing anything, especially if you have curly hair, wear scrunchies, do not wear hair ties. Only time that I wear hair ties is if I'm like doing some sort of like red carpet style where I need some sort of slicked back, nude looking thing in my hair. Even if you don't have curly hair, if you're putting rubber bands in your hair, if you're putting like elastics in your hair, it's gonna take some hair out. This is like creepy and gross, but if your hair is in a ponytail, it's literally pulling all the weak hairs around your face, like that frame in your face. This is the first thing to break. It's like the, what would you call it? Like the front liners at like war. Long story short, wear scrunchies, don't do your ponytails too tight. Keep your edges, okay? That's that on that. Number three, preparation for your style. There is one product that my friend Jenna has been telling me about for literally years. Since I started my curly hair journey, I asked her, I was like, dude, how to get your hair so like fluffy and soft and not crunchy, nice soft pillow soft curls. She always said Miss Jessie's pillow soft curls. Her hair literally looks pillow soft. I could not say that like any more sponsor. She uses this product, Miss Jessie's pillow soft curls. I saw it at CVS, I bought it, it is the most amazing curl product I can recommend to you guys that's like available over the counter, easy to get, except for today. This is empty. We went to go buy it. Oh, oh there's a little some some left. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I went to go buy this today and they did not have it, but they had every other freaking product by this person. Anyway, there's a couple products that I use when I'm styling my hair. First one is Miss Jessie's Pillow Soft Curls. I just started using that maybe like two months ago. My curls, they've just looked so much more natural within the past like two months. They're not like as crunchy. They're not as like stuck together. They're more breathable, but they're not frizzy. It's just a good product. So the next thing that I'll use is a leave-in conditioner. This is probably my favorite brand for curly hair and just natural hair. It's Carol's Daughter. I really love Carol's Daughter. All of their products are super good. So I use their leave-in conditioner. You can just 
spray it all over. You can honestly like take this with you in your bag or something and just spritz your hair to give it a little more like moisture throughout the day. But it's so good. It's got like coconut, it's got coconut oil. It's just, it smells really good and it's cruelty free. So we love. Two other things to have when you're styling your hair when it is curly, a source of water. This has changed my life guys. Doing your hair damp versus doing your hair pretty freaking soaking wet, I swear has changed my life. I used to think, oh, you just apply your products obviously when your hair's like still a little wet. No, when I did that, my hair would end up frizzy in certain zones. It would just always end up frizzy in like certain areas, you know, like especially the back. But when my hair is fully wet, when I'm able to separate it and like really take it section by section, obviously so it's not like literally dripping buckets, but like just in that one section that I can control and I can put the product in and then squeeze out all the extra, add some more. It has changed my life. It has taken away frizz pretty much completely. So that's basically what I do. Also, what you're going to need is a good brush. This looks disgusting. I'm gonna turn it this way. <laughs> a good brush that's clean or not, you know, who cares? Basically what I'll do is I will divide my hair section by section. I'll start at the bottom and I'll work my way to the top. Before I add any products in, I'll take my brush after my hair is wet and I'll just detangle it one more time. Just because you detangled your hair in the shower doesn't mean throughout the process of maybe deep conditioning, walking around your house to retrieve all your products or getting breakfast or whatever, that your hair stayed detangled the whole time. Every second that goes by that you step out of your shower, your hair is dry drying, it's raising, it's mingling with the other hairs around it, and it's creating frizz. I like to use a brush like this that has like more close together bristles, like a true brush, not a comb. This makes sure that it gets every single strand detangled. Whereas if I were to just go through it with a comb like I do in the shower, within the little like bristles of the comb, that hair is like a curl in itself that's gonna be frizzy. So I make sure to like hit every single strand, make sure that stuff is nice and detangled. Also, I like my curls to be more tamed and like uniform and like a very springy, bouncy, fluffy curl. So that's why I like this brush because I can go in with my hair, I can brush it through, see how my hair perks up after the brush goes through it, and then see where my hair naturally likes to part into their own individual curls. I'll go and I'll add the product. Now, I'm not an expert on which order you should apply your product in. I basically start by adding the leave-in conditioner, and then I'll go in and I'll add a curl cream, and then I'll go in with a gel. So I'll basically go through my hair, work through all of the product, making sure that any frizz that shows up is immediately gone back to with water, a brush, and the product. If you move on to the next section and that section that you just ended with is not perfect, you can tell how your hair is going to dry when it's wet. You can tell. So if there's pieces that are just like a little questionable, always just hit it again because it's easier to fix when it's wet than when it's dry. Just take your time. Number one thing that I can say when you're styling your hair is be patient, be patient, because if you're not patient, your hair is gonna end up with frizz. I'll basically just go throughout my entire hair and then once my whole head is nice, good, looking great with all of its product, then I move on to diffusing my hair or drying it. Don't forget about the back of your head. Make sure the back of your head has product in it too, not just the front what you see, because as your hair starts to dry, the front might look good to you, but don't forget about the back. People are still gonna be seeing that back. And then with the front of your hair, make sure that those curls look good. Like make sure that they're framing your face the way that you want them to. Make sure the part is how you want it to be, because once your hair dries, you cannot go back. It's just not gonna be good. So make sure you lock in what you want to happen to your head when it dries. Last but not least, the fourth step. We've made it. We've shampooed, we've conditioned, we've deep conditioned, we've detangled, we've styled, we have done it all. All we need to do is lock in our style. Now, when I have all the time in the world, I will diffuse my hair. If I'm just every day like washing and going with my hair, I'll probably put it up in like a style. I like to do ponytails, slicked back ponytails, ponytails that have a little more like curl going on in the front, two buns, there's so many styles that I like to do with my hair that don't require diffusing and putting heat on it. If you guys want me to do a video where I like show all of my curly hair styles, I can do that for you. But today we're going to be talking about diffusing the hair. First, I have to give credit where credit is due. I learned how to diffuse my hair the way that I do by Mains by Mel. She is a curly hair YouTuber that has blonde hair as well. She's my inspo for like my blonde color. She's great. So anyway, I learned how to diffuse my hair because of a video that she put out 
out on how to diffuse curly hair the right way. So I'm gonna put that in the description box because I feel like everyone needs to watch it, regardless of if you have curly hair or straight hair and you wanna add waves, anything like that, it's a great video. I now do not put the diffuser up to my hair until pretty much the very end. When I first started diffusing my curly hair, I literally would take the diffuser, put it on the ends and like scrunch it up and be like scrunching my hair like all over my head. Like, oh yeah, like I'm getting those curls like diffused. What I learned is that my hair curls on its own. It doesn't need any extra hands to curl the hair for it. Like I don't touch my hair anymore when I diffuse until the last minute when I just need to hit like maybe an inside that didn't dry completely or something like that. So basically my diffusing process takes about 10 to 15 minutes, I would say. And I basically just start by putting the diffuser all around my hair, but never even like touching my hair with a diffuser, just transferring the heat all around. The diffuser is going to distribute even heat. It's not gonna be blowing a circle of hair like this way or that way. It's not going to move your hair. It's just gonna evenly distribute the heat nice and good as if you were outside and there's a nice summer breeze. Also important to note, don't start with the bottom of your hair. Start with the scalp and then naturally work your way down because heat always transfers. So while you're doing the scalp, you won't even realize it, but the ends are like getting dry regardless. So just don't start with your ends. It's gonna break your hair off. It's gonna be unnecessary and the ends are gonna dry nice as well, whether you're using a diffuser or not because the ends of your hair are already pretty nice and juicy. That's where the curl really wants to kick in. So yeah, basically just don't diffuse your ends until the very end. Important to note, when your hair is in its wet stage, do not touch your hair. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. Like literally do not touch your hair. Any little touch that you do is going to create frizz. It's going to create frizz, especially if you're pulling apart your curls. Once the curl has product in it, it is wet, it is set, it is great. Don't touch your hair. Flipping your hair when it's wet, like any of that, cause it's literally just gonna create separation and frizz. So don't do that. So yeah, basically I will just diffuse my hair. I'll sit, I'll chill, I'll play some music really, really loud and I'll just diffuse my hair. Won't touch it. I'll just be patient. I'll just be like putting the diffuser all around my hair. Once your hair is pretty much dry, like 90% dry. That's when you can really like feel around your hair after the curl cast has been formed and you can see what needs to be hit a little longer with the diffuser. Once my hair has the defined curls that I want in like 90% of the areas, if the scalp is still a little wet, I'll just leave it, prevent that extra heat damage. And my hair pretty much dries 100% within like the hour. So once your hair is nice and diffused, it's probably going to feel very, very crispy and crunchy. That is okay. My biggest mistake in the past like year was when my hair got to that stage, I was like, oh cool, my curls are really defined. Don't touch them. Like literally just leave them as is, leave them all crispy and crunchy. That's just the reality. I'm using the wrong products. Who cares? My hair is defined, no frizz, cool, great. One day, this might just be the biggest like idiot fail of my life if, if you know what I'm about to say because you're smarter than me. But one day, like literally maybe like three months ago, I was just living my life with my crusty, crunchy hair. I took one of my curls and I just pulled on it and like literally the curl went from being crusty and crunchy and like four shades darker than my actual blonde hair is and it like fluffed up and got all nice and like blonde and it looked effortless and it looked like I just air dried my hair out of like the dang beach like it just looked amazing so long story short after you diffuse your hair you could either choose to leave it and it's like crunchy defined state which would make your hair less voluminous but it would look really crunchy and hard or you could pull apart your curls only after they're 100% dry and and your hair would look like this, like all nice and fluffy and like juicy and effortless and beachy and like natural, you know, like naturally this is what my hair is supposed to look like. And that's that. Only thing else I have to say about that would be, I don't know, I feel like I'm living a new life. I feel like I have a new lease on life once I've learned to pull apart my curls. And after that is done, that is your curly hair. Your hair will look amazing. It will look probably somewhat similar to mine, maybe better, maybe worse. Who knows? My hair looked terrible three months ago. I'm learning every day. It's it's so funny because the stuff that I've learned about my hair, I literally learn a new trick once a month. So my curly hair routine will probably even look different like a month or a year from now. Like it's gonna look really different. So that is my curly hair routine. It is literally that easy. It takes probably all together from shower to end of diffusion, maybe like 30 minutes, 35 minutes, which is funny because straightening my hair actually only takes 35 minutes. It takes me three hours. Why does it take you three hours? 
35 minutes, like to straight. It's great. The products that I use, I really, really love. I really believe in. I'm sure I'm always gonna be discovering new cool products. I love my hair. I love how it's like volumized, but it's still tame. So that is it for this video. I'm going to link all the products that I used in the description box below. I'm going to link a playlist for you guys to listen to while you're doing your hair, because I know it is a process. I'm gonna link pretty much everything that I talked about that I can in the description box below. So be sure to give this video a big thumbs up for natural curly hair and just natural hair in general. If you're out there trying to live your natural journey, if it's difficult, I pray that you will see the light. It's gonna come. Here, Maya, come over here. Your hair looks so good. Shut up. I didn't even do my hair Look today. at my sister's I didn't even hair. Do my hair today. What the heck is going on? Look <laughs> at my. What the? the length. The, the rope. The, okay, you should not have worn a black shirt so you could like see the length. Maya, do you have any curly hair advice? Um. If you have curly hair and you like to straighten your hair, I'm not gonna judge you because I like to straighten my hair too. My sister likes to straighten her hair. But one thing that I would say is if you are gonna straighten your hair, at least leave your hair in its curly natural state for at least like, just try to go as long as you can without straightening your hair. Cause sometimes I leave my hair curly for like at least a couple weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months. I think two months is like the most I've gone. But like months ago, I thought that I couldn't even go like a week without having my hair straight. So just like build up to it and yeah, you'll get there. That's it. Goodbye. <laughs> if you want more curly hair videos, let me know in the comments down below. We literally should have done this video together. My sister's hair is way better than mine, so. No, it's just longer. Give this video a thumbs up for natural curly hair. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff will be linked down below. And that is it for this video. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next week. Keep those hairs popping. <laughs> She's like, get back here. <laughs> So far from pain I feel it, I feel it, she's gone